You're going to go to studentaid.gov. So that's the website that we're going to navigate to, to do any of this loan counseling, master promissory note, um, anything like that. In your student's portal, under the award summary for financial aid, where they have all the grants, scholarships, and loans in the, in the portal, what you're going to want to do is accept the financial aid in the student portal. That's kind of your first step that gets you initiated. What we're going to be doing from the government side is going through that process so that they can release the funds directly to the school. As we borrow, we're doing it year by year. So we're not signing up for a loan for all four years right now. This process, just like completing your FAFSA every year, is going to repeat itself. So the way that these loans are dispersed to the university is per term. So if the school's on a quarter system, then they get dispersed per quarter directly to the school. Um, if it's on the semester system, then same way, just per semester. Um, as you log in, you're going to come to this point here. And what we're going to first do as I logged in as a parent under apply for aid, I'm going to go right here, apply for a parent plus loan. So you'll notice that right here, apply for a parent plus loan under apply for aid. The other two steps that we're going to take is going to be under complete aid process, and it's going to be complete entrance counseling and also complete a master promissory note. Because there's no collateral, they're not like saying, hey, we need to know the information on your home so that we're, we can give you this loan. This is basically a government promise that you're saying, I will pay this back. I want everybody to understand really just the top level stuff. You can never walk away from this government loan. It's not the type of loan that you can declare bankruptcy or go insolvent and say, I, I can't pay this. Um, this loan will stay with you forever unless there's a loan forgiveness program that you get awarded. So just be very cognizant of that. Um, these are set interest rates. So if you find an alternative loan, like through just a bank or um, wh wherever a lending institution, just find out how competitive the, the rates are with the ones here. <clears throat> There is some talk about loan forgiveness happening at the government level. So just so everyone knows, most likely the first types of loans that would be forgiven is the student loan. So that Stafford loan that I was mentioning, if that ends up being forgiven. Great, but I won't necessarily count on it. But um, just know that this is kind of the first resource that most families use. There are alternate resources. Like I know, I don't want to name any banks, but there are some that offer education loans. Just be cognizant of how, how much they're charging for interest. Um, so I'm going to start here first under apply for aid. And you only need to do this step for the parent loan. If you're logged in as a student, the only two steps that you'll have to take as a student is the, this one, complete entrance counseling and complete master promissory note. Some cases they may have you do an annual student loan acknowledgement. That's kind of new, but I'm going to go through this one first. Apply for um, parent plus loan. So I'm a parent of an undergraduate student. So as this kicks in, so what we're going to do here first is we're going to select the award year. So what we're shooting for right now is the 2022-23 school year. Student information. So if this is your first time accessing this, then you're going to have to manually go in and populate that. And then what we're going to do here, once that auto populates, it's gonna take you to this first step, which is request for deferment. What that means is once you take out this loan, do you want to forego making payments right away? And they'll give you a six month deferment period after the student graduates from college. Meaning as long as they're in college as full-time students, you don't have to make any payments during that period. Six months after they graduate, that's when the loan payments kick in. If you choose to go that route, then you can say, yes, I want to defer. You don't have to, you can choose to make interest payments right away if you want. You can make principal and interest payments. Um, you, you can indicate that as well. This is asking, do you want to defer um, the parent plus loan for another six months after graduating? We'll say yes. This is asking, do you want to authorize the school if anything were to happen on the campus, like, I don't know, miscellaneous that you need emergency funding for to pay for those charges? Do you want the loans to kick in for that? 
Uh, this is discretionary. Some families choose yes, some say no. I'm just going to leave that blank for right now. If there's any overage, meaning your financial aid covered a certain amount and you requested a little bit extra loan money, sometimes families will do this in case, let's say they need to pay for books, in some cases for transportation. A parent could request a little bit more through a loan to pay for those school-related things. Um, if you don't need to do that, don't do it. Um, but this is asking, where do you want those funds to go to? So right now we're gonna indicate the parent. You're gonna choose the school that you want these funds to go to. So if you go to this part here, there are a few schools that actually don't um, use the government system for this process. They use their own internal um, system through their portal. You'll know if you get the green box right here with a check like you see here, then we're good to go. If it gives you the red, then they'll just have you go through the school's portal to do this that I'm showing you. Now, this is another important part. When you get to this stage, it's going to ask, how much do you want to borrow? I want to borrow the maximum direct loan that I'm eligible for as determined by the school. Or if you want to specify a specific loan amount that you want, you can do that here. So in some cases, a family knows exactly the amount that they want to borrow. The rest, they're going to just pay out of pocket, let's say. Um, in most cases, families don't necessarily want to go that route. They're just going to take everything through the loan. So they're just going to choose this and say, I'll pay this back directly with the lender or with the government in this case. Um, and then here, what we're going to do is we're going to specify the loan period. So um, let's say in this case, we're going to say July of 2022. And the end period for this would be June of 2023. That's what we're saying that this loan will be good for. Continue. They're asking your relationship to the student. This is my current permanent address and continue. And then it's gonna give you a summary. Everything that you just went through, that we just walked through, continue. And then I have read and understood all of this. Now I zoom through this. Obviously I do encourage you to read this is so you know what you're signing up for, obviously. And then once you're done, you're going to click submit. This is the part where it takes you through a credit check. Um, the only circumstances where I've seen that a family did not qualify is if they have a very, very, very low credit score or um, they're still in arrears with the IRS, meaning that they're making payments. Um, otherwise, even with a moderately okay credit score, um, families generally do get approved for this. And now I'm going to go to this part, which is complete the master promissory note. So the reason why they have these steps, by the way, is a couple of years ago before they mandated this part is um, <laughs> students who are graduating from college, once it became due to make their payments, they said, hey, I never knew what I was signing up for. I didn't know how to make payments back to these loans. And so the government said, okay, we need to fix how we're having people take loans out because apparently no one knows what they're signing up for. So they're going to ask you some basic questions. Parents are like, why are they asking this? But there's a reason that, or a story behind it. So for this one, the loan MPN, we're going to do this part as a parent. So I'm a parent of an undergraduate student. When you're signed in as a student and you're doing your MPN, you're going to do this one up here. I'm an undergraduate student. Right now I'm signed in as the parent. So I'm going to do start. And we are going to just verify some information. Sorry. Um, okay. And again, school. Continue. So what it's going to ask you for in the MPN is two references. These are people that are either friends, family members, they're not endorsing your loan, they're not co-signing, they're not part of the loan. The loan servicers just need someone to reach out to in case they can't contact you or your information changes. Continue. 
these are the disclosures. So borrower request certification authorizations. So you need to understand, and I do encourage you to really be thorough and, and know what you're signing up for here. It's gonna take you through a series of these. So this is just gonna go through these disclosures. Um, main thing I would say, just to be aware of, capitalization of interest, really what that means is, as you extend the loan, you're paying interest on top of the interest that has been accrued. So really, if you can, at a minimum, make interest payments to start allowing, so you don't allow the snowball effect of interest to keep accruing, because sometimes these will be so overbearing by the time the student graduates, depending on how much they borrow, that the, the loan payments can, can get out of whack. Um, that's again why I say just be aware of how much you're borrowing. So that's the main thing for the master promissory note. Nothing else that I need to walk you through there. This part here is probably the most time consuming, which is the entrance counseling. And again, um, you're completing this now for an undergraduate student. You're not doing this for a graduate student or a professional, only for undergrad. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna learn here. Same drill on this one. Continue. Now, it's going to take you through a series of the different um, steps that's in here. I'm going to start, and it's going to say the cost. So we're going to say, for this school, we're going to go out of state on campus, and it's going to be a four-year program. What it's going to do is it's going to project the total cost for you for this education. Next, federal work study, part-time jobs, savings, and 529 plans. It's going to define what principal interest loan fees are. By the way, all of these loans that you're signing up for here do have loan fees associated with them. It's a percentage of the total loan amount. Okay, so this is going over current interest rates. So for a direct subsidized loan and direct unsubsidized. So right now, for those of you who have what's called an unsubsidized loan for the student, the interest rate is 3.73 as of this reading right now. The loan fee is right here. The differences between subsidized and unsubsidized Anytime you hear the term subsidized, it means that the government is not charging interest during your um, while you're in college. Um, so if you get a subsidized loan, that's an interest-free loan. It's amazing. Take that no matter what. And then by the time you're done, you can pay it off. But they're not charging you interest in a subsidized loan. Again, these are giving you totals that you can borrow. It steps up by $1,000 each year. So it's saying that the aggregate limit's 31,000, but you can go um, more than four years, obviously, for an undergrad. Loan fees, current interest rate for um, parent loans, 6.28% fixed. Loan servicer. If anything changes in your situation, um, you lose a job, anything that happens, the loan servicer that is assigned to you are the people that you want to reach out to. Um, they're managing your loan, all your payment options. So you'll be in touch with them to kind of manage anything. If you need a forbearance, which is basically a pause on your payments, the loan servicer are the people that you'll talk to. So they're gonna check our knowledge and this is part of the loan entrance counseling. I'm gonna walk you through. What document explains your rights and responsibilities as a federal student loan borrower? Which loan type provides interest subsidy, meaning um, the Department of Ed pays the interest while you're in school during the grace period? So we talked about that. It's a direct subsidized. Who should you contact if you have trouble making your payments? Uh, I feel like someone just talked about this. Boom. And then we're gonna to continue to the next section. So we're gonna go for bachelor's and we're gonna do, let's do sociology. Total amount we're gonna borrow. Let's say we're gonna borrow 200,000. 
and program length, we're going to say four years. This will tell you by the time, if it takes you the full length of the repayment period to pay that back, the amount of interest on top of the amount that you borrowed will be this. Difference between what you've, um, what you're offered and what you need. So this is explaining on your award letter when you can, how you can interpret your financial aid and whatever's left over is what you can either pay out of pocket or borrow. Capitalization of interest, kind of like what I was mentioning earlier. There's different repayment plans. So basically they have options such as a graduated payment plan, a standard plan. A graduated plan, you can think of it once the student graduates from college, just because they're starting out in their first job, probably not earning as much as they will down the line, your payment back to your student loans will be smaller. As you get closer towards the end of that period where the loan is be, needs to be paid off, <clears throat> towards the tail end of the loan, the loan payments get larger. And obviously by that stage, you may be earning more because it's about 10 years out, for example. Let's check our knowledge. Who do you contact if you've already accepted more loan money than you need? Your school's financial aid office, your loan servicer, your parents. Let's go with the financial aid office. What increases your total loan balance? Interest accrual, interest capitalization, or both of these? Let's go with both. How can you reduce your total loan costs? Make interest payments while in school? Make interest and principal payments while in school, make interest and principal payments during the grace period, any of these. Yeah, so let's go with that one. Kind of straightforward stuff, as you can see. Okay, it's giving you a general idea. Um, tied into the government scorecard, for example, can give you an idea of what the estimated annual gross salary may be, loan balance, estimated monthly payment amounts, and so forth. So it's pretty thorough now, actually. They did a better job revamping this whole thing. The numbers are scary, but be aware of what we're putting in. And then um, which payment is right for you? So like I was mentioning, we have a standard, we have a graduated repayment, we pay as you earn. Um, it's really neat how they've evolved some of these payment options. So at any time you can flip a switch and contact your servicer and change these if you need, once you get there telling you things that you can do to keep your costs down. Again, these are all disclosures you should definitely be reading. Who do you contact if you have questions about repayment plans? So let's go with your loan servicer. Who do you contact when it's time to enroll in a repayment plan? We'll go with them again. What percentage of your gross salary does the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau suggest your student loan repayment be in order to be affordable and limit your risk of delinquency or default? I'm gonna say 8%, but I think it's 4% if I'm not mistaken. Okay, good. Um, which repayment plan will you be placed in automatically unless you change it? Let's go with the standard. That's the one that you're usually gonna be placed into. telling you what delinquency or default really means, ways to manage your credit. They can garnish tax refunds that you get in order to make your payments. So if people are delinquent on their payments, I've actually heard of them taking tax refunds away from people, wage garnishments too. How to prevent and avoid delinquency and default, some kind of just general knowledge to have. There are some loan forgiveness programs as well. And there we are for the most part. So we can submit. I'm not going to submit this just yet, but that is really the stage, the three stages of how you want to manage this process. Now, remember, this is for the parent. What you're going to do um, first is log in for the student loan portion. You're going to do the loan entrance counseling, which is this. And then you're going to also do the master promissory note. So just be sure to have two references ready to put in there when you're doing your master promissory note. Um, I kind of zoomed through just to kind of give you the short version of how to answer these, but like I said, take your time and really read through this and be thorough.